Blizzard just dropped an absolute bomb of information for phase two. So get ready for a ton of changes that are going to be coming. And it looks like the Classic WoW dev team has absolutely been listening to the community and we're getting a lot of really, really good things. Things like GDKPs getting banned, utility runes. So Paladin Blessings actually having an extended period of time or like rogues having combo points that can actually stay on their target when they have to kick something. This is all coming in phase two and I have that video breaking down all of the information coming out right after this one but in this video I want to go over all of the new runes that were teased today in the phase two preview like shamans actually getting two-handed mastery yes that's right two-handed mastery in hunter trap launchers let's just break down all of these runes and just kind of like see what they all are so far and before I look at those runes exactly again I did mention they did do some updates that are going to be like quality of life. I released a video going to all of the quality of life runes I think we should get for Season of Discovery, and it looks like they listened to a lot of them. Totemic Projection, which is going to be moving your totems. It, you're not no longer going to leave your totems off in Narnia. You can bring them with you. Redirect for rogues that can actually help you with your combo points. Enhanced Blessings, Longer Blessings, which is one of the most frustrating things that you have to deal with. There's going to be a ton of these, and you actually won't need to get them in the raid itself. You will get these from five player dungeons and these quality of life things aren't even taking up a rune slot so this will be like one of the coolest things they could possibly do very very excited about that but let's talk about the runes for each class starting with the paladin and these new runes are going into your belt and boot slot so just be ready we're getting two new equipment slots for the runes you'll still be able to use your old runes the paladins are getting sheath of light and guarded by the light sheath of light will make it so that dealing damage with a melee attack with your melee weapon will increase your spell power by 30% of your attack power for the next minute. And this also makes your critical heals count as a hot as well. So if you crit heal someone, then you will get 60% of that healing also done to them over the next 12 seconds. This is awesome. So paladins can actually be doing something like melee weaving and healing at the same time. Rep paladins doing damage and healing or just holy paladins doing some damage and it increasing their healing. It's going to make the playstyle of paladins a lot more fun. And they also got guarded by the light, which makes it so that each time you hit something, then you gain 5% of your mana back every three seconds for 15 seconds. But it also makes all of your main healing abilities actually heal for 50% less. So this will give you back mana, but you can heal a lot less. This is something that's going to be great for something like a prot paladin or a rep paladin. If you're having mana issues, this completely solves that as long as you're not a healer. And I like this hybrid kind of play style or their thought process where they're addressing the mana issues of some of the classes, but making it so that you can't use that in a broken way for some of the other specs. Next, we have hunters who are actually getting trap launcher. I didn't think this would happen, but trap launcher where hunters can throw their traps up to 40 yards. And now you can also use your traps in combat. Traps in classic World of Warcraft don't do a ton of damage, so I can kind of think or expect that we might be getting a little bit of damage buffs to our traps. Explosive Trap is a huge amount of your damage in Wrath of the Lich King, and I think they really loved that they added the trap launcher there. So we might see some buffs happen to traps eventually, as well as melee specialists. We're finally gonna be able to go full melee hunter. And this makes it so that Raptor Strike's cooldown is reduced to three seconds. It is no longer on your weapon swing. It is just an instant attack. Mongoose Bite no longer has a cooldown at all, and Raptor Strike has a 30% chance on each attack to not even trigger that cooldown. So we're going to have fully melee hunters. Enjoy just getting into combat with these hunters. And then all of a sudden they just like whittle you down or destroy you because melee hunters are going to be just like sneaky. You won't know it's a thing until it's a thing. Warriors are getting Rallying Cry and Blood Surge. So they're getting a raid CD that can increase the HP of everyone in the raid by 15% for 10 seconds. This is like great in case there's some really big tank busting mechanics or just raid busting mechanics in the new raid in Nomer, which definitely kind of like leads to us thinking that there's a lot more we're going to have to deal with. And Blood Surge makes it so that Heroic Strike, Bloodthirst, and Whirlwind all have a chance to make your next Slam ability an instant cast. Slam is usually not that great to use. It takes a while to cast it. So this increases your or gives you a proc that'll increase your damage. Hopefully it won't even reset weapon switch 
swings. This is like another exciting thing for warriors. Their damage is gonna skyrocket if they're not getting tuned, but warriors are looking great. Rogues are finally getting our first real kind of AOE ability in the form of Shuriken Toss. Now Shuriken Toss will throw your Shurikens at up to four targets. It will give you a combo point and it will hit them for 25% of your attack power. So if you can stack your attack power pretty high, this will actually hit like decently hard. Now I'm not sure exactly how much this is gonna cost energy wise, but this is kind of an exciting ability. Rogues needed some sort of AOE and four targets is enough for it to feel something like viable. Now they also are getting Master of Subtlety, which basically makes them more bursty in the beginning of fights or PVP because your attacks made from stealth and for six seconds after will have their damage increased by 10%. So having a rogue open on you is gonna have a little bit of a buff on them for the next six seconds watch out for them in pvp and as if priest healing wasn't strong enough they are literally getting a shield wall for their tanks or themselves or any one of their friends in pvp with pain suppression if you play any other version of world of warcraft you know how strong pain suppression is and they're literally getting it it will reduce the incoming damage to your target by 40 percent for eight seconds it also has them resist dispel mechanics by 65 percent which is kind of specific and again leading probably towards the raid but will have some implications in pvp and shadow priests are getting mind spike which will hit the target for some damage 108 to 125 but the added effect of this is that it will increase your crit chance of your next mind blast by 30 percent and this can stack up to three times so they can almost guarantee actually they could guarantee that they are getting a crit on their next mind blast to go for some huge bursts in certain situations and Warlocks are getting Invocation and Dance with the Wicked, or Dance of the Wicked. Invocation looks more like it's gonna stop you from clipping your spells. So Refreshing Corruption, Immolate, Curse of Agony, or Siphon Life, when there is less than six seconds left on that dot, then you will do instant damage to the target equal to one period of the spell's periodic damage. So like one hit or one tick will be going off instantly if you're refreshing this. This kind of is gonna be a DPS gain because right after one of those ticks, like right after one, you will refresh it and then you will get like an instant free tick and you also don't have to worry about clipping your dots ever. Now Dance with the Wicked is for tanks as well as PvP god warlocks that are gonna be unkillable, but you and your demon pet gain dodge chance equal to your spell crit strike chance each time you deal a crit on the enemy. And you also gain back 2% mana. Mana was something that tank warlocks were kind of struggling with a little bit, and it's something that's going to be nice to have mitigated. So there's no longer going to be any mana issues, as well as you're going to have quite a good amount of dodge chance, hopefully. I'm not sure exactly what the crit chance we're expecting to have so far is, but that's going to be pretty nice. And mages are getting Missile Barrage. This is actually a really fun one from other versions of the game, especially for Arcane Mages, where your Arcane Blast, Fireball, and Frostbolt have a chance to give you a proc that basically makes your next Arcane Missiles amazing. It makes it cost zero mana, so your next Arcane Missiles will be free, and they will have half the duration, as well as the missiles themselves will go out faster. So you'll just see a ton of very quick missiles going out for Arcane Missiles. They also are getting Chronostatic Preservation. This is like like a new healing spell that kind of saves the damage you're doing and then unleashes it later. Mages are loving to do that, but obviously it's talking about time where it fuses arcane, fire, and frost magic to freeze chronomatic energy into a stored state for later use. You can hold this energy for up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires. When unleashed, it heals the friendly target for 665 to 998. It's a thousand heal and I'm assuming this could probably crit which is going to be pretty much a full heal whenever using this. The spell is considered arcane fire and frost for interactions with other spells, talents, and effects. And shamans are the class we saw three runes for which is actually really exciting. Enhanced shamans with maelstrom weapon which is whenever you deal damage with your melee attacks, I guess every shaman can use this, but it reduces or has a chance to reduce the cast time of your next lightning bolt, chain lightning, lesser healing wave, healing wave, chain heal, or lava burst by 20%. And this can stack up to five times. Basically what it is, is it will make the next cast of any of those abilities instant. And this will be a huge DPS increase for enhanced shamans, but I guess also you would kind of melee weave 
or melee attack as any of the other shamans potentially with this. And we also got Spirit of the Alpha, which infuses the target with the Spirit of an Alpha Wolf, increasing their threat generation by 45% for 30 minutes. This basically helps out for shamans that have been using different runes than were relatively intended for their actual threat generation. So this is really nice, giving you 45% increased threat gen for 30 minutes. And last but not least, we are seeing two-handed mastery. That's right, enhanced shamans, two-handers that want to run around and one-shot people with Pendulum of Doom next phase. You're totally in, you're totally winning. Each time you strike an enemy with a two-handed weapon, you gain 30% attack speed with two-handed weapons for 10 seconds. Literally 30% haste statically with a two-handed weapon. This is going to be huge, so much fun. I'm not sure what's going to be the most DPS in PvE, but it's going to be so fun to test things out. And these were literally all of the runes previewed today, but that's like such a small amount of the runes we're actually going to get next phase. It definitely shows us that the World of Warcraft devs have been listening to the qualms of the community, things that are really frustrating. I would anticipate mages are going to get something like a mage table. I would anticipate warriors are going to get longer battle shouts or longer shouts, and I would anticipate warlocks are going to get soul wells. But this is all speculation until we hear even more information. I will have a video just breaking down everything we heard today, but it was like, like a lot of information and I was busy. I was playing Power World, so sorry for the delay, but I'm so excited for phase two. Get ready for like a crazy amount of phase two videos and I'll see you guys all on the next one.